the book of Revelation follows this pattern that each Hebrew letter is significant and supplies a structure for the chapters, 1 through 22. There's 22 letters. But also, the same is true of the Gospel of John, and also, we've noticed some very interesting parallels, or what I was really saying last week, because I'm afraid people may get offended, coincidence. Coincidence. And here we have chapter, the tenth sign in the heavens is the sign of Aquarius. The sign of Aquarius is a man who has an urn and he's emptying the urn which is filled with water and you can see it going into the fish's mouth. Now what does this represent? Well, let's read it. Because what, by the way, Revelation chapter 10 the point of Michael coming to, De- to John is to say, here, the seal's off. Here's an understanding of a prophecy. Now you must prophesy again to the people. What is he pro- prophesying about? All those judgments associated with the book of Revelation. So judgment, right? Let's look at this uh, sign here. Anciently, the constellation Aquarius was associated with the great deluge uh, uh, that's uh, that the, the flood. Okay, now this is not just a biblical story. This is all over in ancient religions. Ancient religions record a great flood that that destroyed the whole earth. It's not just biblical. So anciently, this constellation was associated with this great flood or, or deluge of judgment that swallowed up the earth, overflowing the land with water. The star in the, in the man's right shoulder, so the man's looking like this, so it would be this shoulder, right? The star in his right shoulder is Sa'd al-Melek, which means the record of the pouring forth. And you can see he's pouring the water out, right? And that pouring of the water is judgment. So it's the record of the pouring of forth of that water. The star in the man's left shoulder is Sa'd al-Sun, and another star located in his right leg of the man is named Sheet, and both of these stars have the same meaning, which is who goeth and returneth. So one of, the, one of the messages is saying the record of the pouring forth of this judgment that destroyed the earth. And the other is saying the one who uh, went and returns or, or, or uh, who goeth and returneth. They appear to speak prophetically of the, of the man Noah who entered into the ark until the judgment of God had passed and afterwards he returned to dwell on the earth again. Well, how relevant is that? Well, it's very relevant because that's what the whole story concerning the church is about. See, God, is ju- God didn't just come up with this prophesy about the judgment to come just to tell people, ha ha, judgment's coming, I'm going to get you now. The whole point of prophesying and preaching about the, ju- the coming judgment is so there's a people that will escape the judgment. There's a way of escape. And what's interesting here is not only the people that are going to escape are going to go, but they're also going to return. And that's all captured anciently in this sign. So I think it's very coincidental. And and here with um, this... uh, the sign I've got uh, circled there, that's uh, one of the um, uh, deacons of Aquarius. It's called Pisces Australis. Now this has been associated with Noah himself. This is pretty cool. Being further, re- uh, he's revered as the source of all knowledge. That's because in the ancient religions, they don't call him Noah, but this flood occurred, and of course, Who's the oldest person on the earth after they come out of the boat? Noah. Who's the wisest person? Noah. In fact, the only people on the earth is Noah and his three sons. 
and, their, and the daughters, right? The daughter-in-laws. So it makes sense that the ancient world also has this record. Constellation Pisces Australis is imagined as a fish lying upon its back while being the recipient of the water of blessing that is poured directly into his mouth by the man of Aquarius. Why do we say it's a water of blessing? Because they're going to a new world. Noah and his family, it's actually the flood is a blessing for them. Because all the evil is going to be wiped out. They're going to a new place. Just like the judgment that's coming upon the earth is actually a blessing for all of us who are escaping. We're not going to be here for the judgment. And when we come back, it's all going to be done with and it's going to be a great place. Satan's going to be bound. The uh, picture here is actually, this is your Greek, your familiar Greek planisphere of the heavens. This is the one in Egypt, the famous uh, uh, Dendera zodiac. And here's Aquarius. And it's interesting that he has two urns and two streams of water. I brought this up at one time. The Bible actually talks about two floods. The Bible talks about the flood in the days of Noah, and it also talks about a flood between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2, where the earth became void. Darkness was on the face of the deep, and it was covered in water. And God had to remove the water, right? So it's interesting that, uh, that we have those two judgments here. But it really means the same thing here. And here's that same fish we talked about, which is the, the receiver. But underneath, you see this, it's circled and it has these eight souls. And those eight souls are associated with this fish. And it's very interesting that eight souls were associated with the ark. In fact, we can go right here to 1 Peter and we read, Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. This is a coincidence. Is this a coincidence? To me, for me, that's a coincidence. In fact, I think it's more than a coincidence. But for some of our listeners, I'm just saying it's a coincidence. If you don't, you know, if you don't think much of it, that's fine. Well, of course, we have Noah's Ark here. Well, why is this relevant for Revelation chapter 10 and John prophesying of the judgment? Because in Luke chapter 17, Jesus said this. As it, he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Did you notice that the people did not, they were not aware of what was happening until it came? The only people that escaped and were safe was the one family of eight people. The judgment came quickly upon them and Jesus said that's the way it's going to happen in these last days. And then he added another one. He said in verse 28, he said, Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. The same day Lot went out, the judgment came. Well, what's the teaching of the rapture? We say the judgment is going to occur and the tribulation is going to begin right after we're taken out. And there's still hope for people that are going through it that they can be spared just like Noah was spared. Verse 30 says, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Revealed from heaven. So it's all relevant to Revelation 10.5. So let's, uh, let's go back. 
to uh, Revelation 10, verse 8 through 11. We've read this already, but let's read it again. The voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me and said, Go and take the little book which is opened in the hand of the angel, which stands upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went to the angel. I said, Give me the little book. And he said, Take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. I took the little book out of the angel's hand, ate it up. It was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues and kings. If, if we are right that this is the time of the end, we need to tell people. We need to preach this message. And absolutely, just like Ezekiel was told, they won't listen. Now, he, now God didn't say... It was, you know, it, it, it was the Buddhists that wouldn't listen, or the Muslims that wouldn't listen, or the Egyptians that wouldn't listen, or the Babylonians that wouldn't. He said, Israel won't listen. They won't listen to me, and they won't listen to you. Nevertheless, I'm sending you to them. You can speak to them. They speak the same language. I'm not asking anything major of you. Speak my word even though they don't want to hear it. <coughs> Speak my word. We also have this, uh, this, is, uh, this is very right on here with the structure, the Hebrew structure of the book of Revelation. The tenth letter of the alphabet, or the tenth number, if you will, is a yod. And a yod, and, and, and here on the, on the left you can see, this is uh, your, your typical um, Hebrew letter yod. And, and over here, the one above is the ancient pictograph. And what the yod is, is a hand. And in the ancient pictograph, it looks like the whole elbow in, in the hand. You see it? But it has the same meaning. The, uh, the value of the yod is, is 10, which is why we're talking about it right now, because we're in the 10th chapter, right, of Revelation. In Hebrew writings, the letter yod literally means a hand to work a deed, a finished work or a deed done. Do we see a hand anywhere? Not only I saw a hand back there... Not only do we see a hand, and this is why I brought up, he's not waving to you. He's swearing an oath. He's basically saying, I have come, Daniel, you prophesy, I've come to make sure that everything the prophet declared is going to be fulfilled. That's my job. You preach the word, I'm here to see that this word is coming to pass. And this, as I said before, this speaks volumes to the church. Because we have a whole Bible, and that's what God says, Spirit says to us. You speak the word. I'll see that it comes to pass. There's many angels working in the church. But this is the greatest angel that we know exists. And in Revelation 10, 5, we see him. He says, And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, he lifted up his hand to heaven, and he swore by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven, and the things that are therein on the earth, and the things that are therein are, are and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer, which means there's no more hesitation, there's no more delay. Get ready. Here I come, right? Ready or not. We said that last week. We also say that John was the author, Apostle John was the author of the book of John, the Gospel of John, as well as the author of the book of Revelation. He used the same Hebrew structure. So we have the Yod for chapter 10. Uh, same thing here in the Hebrew writings. The letter Yod literally means a hand, a work, a deed, a finished work, or a deed done. Now, it just so happens the Gospel of John has this in, in its context. Verse 32 says, Jesus answered them and said, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do you stone me? The emphasis is upon the works that he did. It really, Jesus is saying, 
The emphasis is upon the works I did. I came to do the works. What did Michael come to? Michael said, Daniel, or John, you prophesy. I'm here to make sure it gets done. I'm going to do the works. Right? In, in verse 37 and 38 of Gospel of John chapter 10, it says, if I, do, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So once again, he's pointing to the works that he did because he'd done them. By the Spirit of God. Jesus even says in other places, He said, I didn't come here to do my own will. I always do what pleases the Father. So if you see Him doing works in the Gospel, and we do, know that He's doing what pleases the Father, right? And then He gives us this next part, kind of almost blows me away because... He's almost preaching the message here. Because Revelation 10 leads into Revelation 11, of course. We spoke about the Word of God. But look what it says here. In verse 11 through 15, he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catches them, and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, I am known of mine. And as the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. What he's actually saying there... He's, he's bringing out that not everybody in the church is a good guy. Not every preacher or, a, or, or prophet or apostle or pastor, not everyone, every evangelist, everyone on TV, can you trust? Most of them are hirelings. Oh, most of them are just, this is a job for them. Jesus saying, the true shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. The true shepherd truly cares about getting the word of God out to the people. Because that is their mission. 